We thank you for your support and encourage you to listen often to stay informed during these crucial times. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's Hawk. It's coming to you live tonight. It's 11-7-2013. The Chinese say it's the year of the snake. Well, let me tell you something. The serpent is about, and the serpent is out there, and he has got all of his henchmen working against you, and also against Israel. And here is chapter 12, Zechariah. The burden of the word of the Lord for Israel, saith the Lord, which stretcheth forth the heavens and layeth the foundations of the earth, and formeth the spirit of man within him. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling, unto all the people round about when they shall be in the siege, both against Judah and against Jerusalem. And in that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces, though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. And in that day, saith the Lord, I will smite every horse with astonishment, and his rider with madness. And I will open mine eyes upon the house of Judah, and will smite every horse of the people with blindness. And the governors of Judah shall say in their heart, the inhabitants of Jerusalem shall be my strength in the Lord of hosts, their God. And in that day will I make the governors of Judah like in a heart the fire among the wood, and like a torch of fire in a sheep. And they shall devour all the people around about on the right hand and on the left. Jerusalem shall be inhabited again in her own place, even in Jerusalem. The Lord shall save the tents, shall save the tents of Judah first and the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Do not magnify themselves against Judah. In that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And he that is feeble among them at the day shall be as David. And the house of David shall be as God, as the angel of the Lord before them. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplication. And they shall look upon me, whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son, and shall be in a bitterness for him, and as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. In that day shall there be a great mourning in Jerusalem, as the mourning of Hadadrim in the valley of Megiddo, and the land shall mourn every family apart the family in the house of David apart, and their wives apart, the family in the house of Nathan apart, and their wives apart, and the family in the house of Levi apart, and their wives apart, the family of Shimei apart, and their wives apart, and all the families that remain, every family apart, and their wives apart. Ladies and gentlemen, When you look at this and you see verse 9, Zechariah 12, And it shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. Well, you see, ladies and gentlemen, i got a little problem here because as Steve Quayle described it for years, you know, the... uh, uh, you know, the backstabbing that would take place, it would be, you know, like the uh, the double cross, the triple cross, and the quadruple cross. And now we have a situation to where, when looking at the development of the nuclear weapons in Iran, and incidentally, for the record, 1997, Steve Quayle said, and had the story all back then, of course, by this time, all that information, you couldn't find that on the web or anything like that, but he had that saved for years, but, you know, computers get knocked out, you know. The NSA boys and all the EIEIOs will knock out a bunch of computers. 
I've had a number of them. So anyway, Steve's had a number of them. You know, all the trouble we've had. But basically, since 97, Iran exploded a nuclear weapon that they had got on the black market, basically. And that my information for years, back in 2004, I told you that I believed that Iran had as many as 40, 45 nuclear weapons. Warheads. Where did they get them? They got them from the Russians. They got them from the Pakistanis. They got them from the North Koreans. And then we've also told you over the years on this show about how there were actual flights daily from Venezuela to Iran and back and forth. And that on those flights, on the flights, uranium ore and things like that were being shipped from Venezuela on so-called, quote-unquote, passenger flights to Iran and equipment and all the different items. So consequently, you have Venezuela, which is basically a Russian client, has a airline that goes daily to Tehran and can take them whatever they want. But now we have a situation where now the Secretary of State of the United States is basically on behalf of the Joker Tut and his allegiance with the father of all lies. You know, when you see the guy lying, and there's the videotape of him lying 36 times, and he still denies it. Well, that, you see, that denial is designed to do only one thing to you. And that is the one thing that basically shows you that, A, he is a lion in allegiance with the father of all lies, and, B, he is trying to create chaos, create the anger, create all of the disturbances in his own population in order to bring on the warfare and to bring on the civil war and to bring on the clash. And I'll talk about that more in a minute, but let's focus on Israel right now just for a moment. Because you see, here's how they're working it. You got the Joker Tut, who is going to be basically taking the sides of the Russians because of a recruitment by the KGB when he was a teenager. And he's allowed Russia to come back in in the Middle East. He's allowed them to come in and be be the preeminent, you know, eminence degrees, you know, the, the, the head hot and tight, the head hoot nanny of that whole deal. And Putin now is the most powerful man in the world. Well, at least the Russians did pay off their debt to the Paris Club and have basically virtually very little external debt whatsoever. Uh, so in that respect, uh, they're, uh, you know, doing better. But the fact is, it has been by use of their agent, the Joker Tut, to bring back and through diplomatic ridiculous policies and screwball stuff, and an alignment with Cairo, an alignment with the Muslim Brotherhood, an alignment with the Shia Muslims, an alignment with everything besides what should be the alignment of the United States, what should be the policy, what should be the self-interest of this country, of promoting this country and its well-being. All of that's been thrown out, and you see now, they're working via carry. Now Israeli settlements illegitimate. They want to put sanctions onto Israel. And you see, now they're going to come up with, they say, you're going to have to cede the lands, and they're going to come right back to it, right back to, you're going to have to go back to your original borders. Or at least give up some more territory in a half measure or a quarter measure of what's wanted. But the fact is, they're going to still want to say Jerusalem should be divided, okay, or Jerusalem shall be not in your possession, but it be an international city, you see. And that's so that the abomination of desolation can arrive 
and set up shop in the temple. The desolation of abomination, huh? Or the abomination of desolation. The desolation of the abomination. Uh, you know, I don't know. Sometimes it just becomes more and more evident, you know, that there's a strong possibility there, although I'm not sure. And that is cryptic for those who know what I'm talking about who have ears to hear. But here you have a situation to where the United States is going to cut a deal, basically a treaty with Iran to remove the sanctions which then will basically the European nations and everything will remove the sanctions that were so long fought for to try to curtail the mullahs, the ayatollahs, from developing capability to continually reproduce their own nuclear weapons, which is what we're talking about. If they've got enough right now, and Iran can put nuclear weapons and could put as far back as 2004 and 5 when I first started telling you about it that they can put them on then they can put a lot more of them on now because they have been able to make their own weapons this stuff is deep clandestine stuff and a lot of it's being done under mountains now there was a little mysterious explosion in the Iraq heavy water plant which is where you're going to make plutonium I believe that was done courtesy of, uh, you know, the Israelis, because I don't believe the United States would have done that. But you see, that forced an issue here and uh, what have you. And now, though, you have a double team going on, and this is to the Mossbacks. This is to the Israelis. I'm going to tell you, you're going to not be served by Obama or by Putin because the two are on the same side. And then you think, well, maybe that's true, but maybe not that it's true, and maybe we'd still like the U.S. because we can get, you know, aid and assistance from them. But the fact is, they're coming against you and making Egypt, you know, give up a base to basically to give a base or to drive Egypt into Russia's camp to give them a base, a permanent base there. They've got the base in Latakia in Syria. they got the base in Tartus there. The Russians do. Now they want one in Egypt. And you see, this is the encirclement of Israel by Gog Magog. It's pre-deployment of forces of naval vessels of Russian missiles and then now you see you have a situation where it looks like Egypt also wants the bomb now. Egypt wants medium range, intermediate range ICBMs, SS 25s from Russia and you see now at exactly the time at the beginning of the month Netanyahu said Israel will not allow Iran to gain capability where they can manufacture all of their own nuclear material to make nuclear weapons. Okay? They said we will not allow that. At the beginning of the month, that was said by Netanyahu. Israelis said that. Prior to that, just prior to that, Iran has said, by the end, Rouhani or whoever said it, by the end of November, we're going to have full capability to make our own nuclear weapons. So in terms of timing, if that's to be stopped and they're not to be allowed to do that, then Israel needs to act. And they're going to need to act unilaterally because the United States is going to stab Israel in the back and judgment will come on the United States because of that. And I just read you Zechariah 12. So consequently, you've got another development now too. 
You have the Saudis who have sort of been, everybody saying, well, the Saudis and the Israelis are the same side against the Iranians and the Shias, you know, in Iran and against them and the al Qaeda's, you know, uh, and they're against uh, this one and that one in, you know, uh, Assad and Syria. But the fact of the matter is, at the end of the day, it's Muslim versus Jew versus Christian versus this one versus that one versus the other one. All the religions in the world. And you've got Albert Pike's World War III getting ready to happen. And then you have the godless, atheistic, secular nation of Red China. And what are they doing? Oh, well, they're preparing with the Russians for the day when they can nuke the United States. And they've come out with their own map of the targets they're going to hit. And they hint at you that they want to take the Midwest because there's not a lot of population. They say the Midwest, what they want is the grain production, which is what they've always wanted. And I've told you this from the beginning. And I can remember as far back, you know, 88, 89, where the old spotlight and then old Chuck Harder and different people talking about how the red Chinese wanted to give their people more food, more of this, and that by doing so, that at a certain point in time, they would require the entire grain production of the entire planet just to feed their people, and that they were arming and getting ready to go and to do that, and that they were doing all of the things, pointing at the long-term plan to do it. So now they're publishing that the fact they're going to hit the coastlines, particularly the west coast of the United States, they see where the radiation is going to come to, all of that, but they're leaving, going to leave that central part alone. That's the old Nazi X plan. You come in from the corners and you drive to the interior in an X across the United States and you drive in. And what you want from their standpoint is, you know, that eastern Montana, uh, you know, North Dakota, South Dakota, Minnesota. Nebraska, Iowa, Kansas, Missouri, Oklahoma, and uh, northern part of Texas, and then part of, of uh, Arkansas. And what do you want that for? You want that for wheat production. You want that for the wheat production for the farmland is what you want. And they've got the industrial, so they don't need that. If you get the western United States, you get those areas right there. You get a lot also. You get a lot of oil from the Bakken. You get, uh, which is, you know, uh, the new oil fields basically up there in uh, North Dakota and eastern Montana. You get a lot of other mining, you know, in those states. You get the food, the whole nine yards right there, which is what they want. So what are they doing? China is now deploying new long-range bomber with a long-range land attack cruise missile capability. They put six of them up there. They can put nuclear warheads or conventional warheads on them or a combination thereof. And they would be able to uh, fly and then launch from a long ways off. They would be able to launch on Guam and also on Hawaii. But now they're also working on a longer-range bomber, which would do it well. Let me say this to you. They could also, with tankers, with air tankers, they could deploy for a lot longer range than two, could they not? Could maybe the Russians sell them some tankers, or could they use Russian tankers? But the fact is, China also has 70 submarines. They have the second-largest submarine fleet. Second or third largest on the planet. And you remember the one that popped up off of Los Angeles and launched a missile and the United States did not even know it was there. And then since that time, we've also turned off the space fence, the space fence, you know, from Arizona, you know, to, uh, New Mexico, uh, Kickapoo, uh, Texas, uh, and then right down there by uh, in Alabama by the Redstone uh, Arsenal, all of that, the space fence. Then you add into that 
the big radar facility at Eglin Air Force Base, the C-6 facility on the backside of Eglin, the 14-story building there. It's all basically combined, and you've got a defensive radar system and an offensive system as well. And you've turned off the space fence now. Joker Tut has. You see how that allows a lot of flexibility for things to come in from above. Also included in that would be alien pine scum, Luciferian, you know, space alien types that uh, may have cut the deal to allow that to happen. You won't be able to necessarily see them coming. So now we also have the Saudis. They want nuclear weapons and may have already ordered nuclear weapons from Pakistan. Now, ostensibly, the Saudis would use them and are using the excuse to use them against Iran. But you see, when they want that, then basically what that does is starts a thing. Basically, the story of the Saudi Arabia's project would be the including the acquisition of missiles capable of delivering nuclear warheads over long ranges. It goes back decades. And in the 1980s, they secretly bought dozens of CSS-2 Ballistic missiles from where? From China! <laughs> A new Saudi CSS-2 base with missile launch. Basically, you know, aimed at, at basically at Iran, but they would also be easily aligned or arranged at Israel. And then they're going to get the nuclear warheads from Pakistan. Let me just tell you this. They already have some nuclear warheads in a bunker out in the middle of their desert. And those basically have been guarded by U.S. forces uh, in conjunction with Saudi forces. And they're sitting there just as the Russians deploy uh, nuclear warheads into countries. They have their special forces sitting on them. We have special forces sitting on those in those bases in the desert in Saudi Arabia that are there in a pre-supposed attack to go against Russia if it was going to come against Saudi Arabia to take the oil fields. You see, Saudi Arabia could be hit by Iran and Russia, and they could knock out basically the oil port facilities in two places, knock the pipelines out. Uh, and then that way nothing would be able to be shipped. Iran can interdict the Persian Gulf. And there you got about 40% of the crude coming into the world, you know, out of that area. And you got nuclear war going. And so now the Saudis want that. But at the same time, aren't the Saudis also the ones? Weren't they Saudi Arabian? Actors in planes that hit the World Trade Center? Weren't they from Saudi Arabia? So I don't necessarily put my stock that the Saudis and Israel are great allies. They're not. Because the Saudis still would like to, what they would call, wipe out Israel, wipe out what the Saudis would call the infidels, and vice versa. So at a certain point in time, the Saudis then would align and back with Islam, regardless of whatever stripe, against the Israelis. So you have exactly what we told you about forming. You get Albert Pike's World War III, or the Gog Magog War, the Ezekiel 38-39. It is forming. Not to wit, you've also got a situation where now, somebody who went to the pilgrimage, the Hajj, in Mecca, has now come back to Spain, and now in Spain you have the MERS, the M-E-R-S, the uh, SARS-like uh, coronavirus MERS, which has been killing people in Saudi Arabia. That now, it's proven that somebody who went to the Hajj has come back and brought that back into another country. Now, how many of them do you think of coming in the United States? I also told you in the past few weeks that allegedly 
allegedly, allegedly, the Joker Tuts allowed the Al-Shababs and the other types of Al-Qaeda involved with the Syrian rebellion, the rebels, but primarily the Shababs and other Al-Qaeda types from Libya allowed them to acquire, allegedly, during the government shutdown time period, bioweapons that have a date and a time frame that they must be used prior to that or they're no longer effective, and that they've actually been training these people, allegedly, at secret U.S. bases and perhaps at Fort Leonard Wood, in how to release and handle the bioweapons. So the fact is, we've got that ready to go now. Now we have an idea that MERS is also starting to come back from the Hajj. And I would tell people right now, I would start taking preventatively, prophylactically, preventatively, I would be taking the colloidal silver, the Oregano capsules, uh, you know, if you got the drops, uh, although I've got that, uh, I like the capsules better. Any of the items that you need in terms of building up your immune system and taking care and strengthening whatever you can strengthen. But I'm telling you, you need to have something that is antibiotic, antiviral. In terms of that, I like the colloidal type silver, which is meso silver at, uh, you go to stevequail.com, click on the Meso Silver Banner, that is the one that was used by the Red Chinese against the SARS virus in Hong Kong. And Frank Keyes, who owns Meso Silver, owns that. Basically, couldn't figure out why they kept shipping pallet after pallet to Hong Kong. And so he kind of tracked it down, and he found out when the Red Chinese government, through intermediaries of attorneys in the West Coast, came and tried to buy his plant, which he did not sell to them, because they found out it was extremely effective in getting rid of that SARS and other bugs. So the trick is, is to lower your viral and, you know, bacterial load now and be ready to go and proofed against it. So I'm just telling you that's what I'm doing, and I've done it for basically 15 years and you also find you may not get the cold and you draw the flu or anything else. So consequently, take that to heart and take it to heed as being something that you should probably do. And you can look at the uh, article about that. Deadly MERS coronavirus reported in Spain. Patients just returned, just returned from Saudi Arabia. And MERS is basically a respiratory syndrome. You know, it's it's really hitting that. And then if they would get that to mutate, you see, with an H7N9 or H5N1 or whatever, the EIEIOs of the bird flu or the mouse pox or this pox or the Ebola, pretty soon you got something that's deadly and easy to catch. If you don't have any of those things, you might want to get a hold of them. We'll be back in a minute after the uh, break. With natural and man-made disasters and economic turmoil, if we don't get well prepared, we will most certainly regret it. Good readiness must include storage of high-quality food that will build us up rather than tear us down. Much of the storable food available is full of bad fats, salt, sugar, nutrient-poor refined foods, and even MSG. In response, Enerhealth Botanicals has created our 40-day and 40-night 100% organic preparedness pail. It's GMO-free and has a 10 to 20-year shelf life if stored at 60 degrees or less. Some of the items need cooking, some can be eaten dry, while some can be soaked and sprouted. These are selling out fast at third the price of storable food packages. Call us at 866-762-9238. That's 866-762-9238. Or go to enerfood.com, E-N-E-R-F-O-O-D.com. 866-762-9238. Or go to E-N-E-R-F-O-O-D.com. Welcome 
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It is Thursday night. It is 11-7-2013. And if you would like to get an additional discount, even off of the uh, discounts that are offered for quantities and what have you on the uh, site at enterfood.com, E-N-E-R-F-O-O-D.com. Or if you want, you can call them at 866 762 9238-866-762-9238. You tell them that Hawk sent you, and you'll get an additional discount off of anything except the Berkfeld water filter. You would get an additional 10% off, even off of the uh, quantity discounts, etc., on everything except for the Berkfeld water filter. Um, so go ahead, tell them Hawk sent you. Now, if anybody would like to uh, get gold or silver, I would suggest that you call Steve Quayle at 406-586-4840, 406-586-4840, and you tell him that Hawk sent you, and they will take good care of you. Remember, you better get your money out of the banks, out of the 401ks, all of the things, just like B told you. The first thing you need to do is to buy as much food as you possibly can get. 40 day, 40 night pails, men or food. Whatever it is you want to do, you better get it. And then also land, or you could raise more food, then gold and silver. And I would have thrown in there as well. I would throw in there medical supplies, NBC gear, etc. And then B told you, to get firearms and ammunition that would be sufficient to protect all of the other. So get out of it. You can see there's a really interesting article, uh, King World News or whatever they posted at stevequail.com today. And basically it's from Barron, uh, uh, Mr. Barron, who they interviewed. And he said basically he's lived in all these different countries in the world and and he's basically, uh, you know, found a large gold supply, he's all those different things. But Barron's, you can understand what Barron's is from. But Barron basically said that uh, uh, you had better understand that the powers that be do not want you to protect yourself at all. When it comes to your finances, they want to destroy it. They want to take rid of all of it. Now, I know there are certain people, the people in the middle and the beginning of the rich class and the, and the professional class that they say, well, that doesn't make sense. It would destroy business and they can't make money. They print all of the money. They are the money center printing banks. They are the central banks. They can give themselves all the money they want. As a matter of fact, the Federal Reserve is printing $85 billion, billion dollars per month minimum and handing it out to the J.P. Morgans, the Goldman Sachs, the city banks, the banks in London, the banks in Zurich, the banks in Saudi Arabia, the Chinese banks, and just giving it to them every month. And then they're going to make you pay taxes to pay that money back. When the money that they've stolen even five years ago, or, you know, back in 2008, 2010, by then you took enough money, you stinking bankers, money center bankers, Luminati bankers, you stole enough money that could have paid off every mortgage in the United States every student loan in the United States, every car payment loan in the United States, every credit card in the United States could have been paid off by the trillions that you've stolen from the American people. And then you could have paid all of those off. You wouldn't have had any kind of loans outstanding to no income. You could have then gone to the American people and said, hey, how would you like to buy a second car, or how would you like to buy a, a hot rod, or how would you like to buy that mountain property, or that property overseas where we can get you in, in a real nice uh, ranch there in the foothills in the Patagonia area, or something like that, by a pristine lake. 
But you see, they didn't do that. They stole the money for themselves, and they want to put you under the thumb. So if you want gold or silver, you call Steve Quayle, 406-586-4840. You tell him Hawk sent you. And while you're at it, you might want to get, you know, Plume Serpent's book or Angel Wars, Past, Present, and Future, or Genetic Armageddon or one of those so that you understand what's getting ready to come on the planet in the near future. And if you'd like to assist Old Hawk, which assistance is needed, and it's greatly appreciated, believe me. I thank the Lord every day for anything that I get to stay in this game, to stay in the game of hitting back and striking blows against the enemies of Lord Jesus, and then to secondarily to warn the remnant, those with ears to hear and eyes to see of what is to come and how to prepare and to give some sense of the season of timing. He can send his best to send uh, Federal Reserve notes, medals, his best. Um, it's just easier. To 315 Edelweiss Drive, E-D-E-L-W-E-I-S-S Drive, Bozeman, Montana, 59718. Send it to Steve Quayle or send it to Hawk in care of Steve Quayle, 315 Edelweiss Drive, Bozeman, B-O-Z-E-M-A-N, Montana, 59718. Put it in a card or a letter and say you can write anything in there. I do read them all when I get them. And uh, basically, uh, I thank anybody who would uh, assist me. Now, going back to what we were talking about, ladies and gentlemen, it's a situation to where you got the Saudis who are wanting nuclear weapons, and, you know, they're going to get them from Pakistan, they, the article says. And this is from the BBC. You want to want to know what's going on. The British still have good uh, news and papers, you know, much better than ours. But you have the Saudi nuclear weapons are on order from Pakistan. Saudi Arabia, here it is, BBC News. Saudi Arabia has invested in Pakistani nuclear weapons projects and believes it could obtain atomic bombs at will, a variety of sources told BBC Newsnight. And so you see you've got this going on. But then you have the United States working Israel from one end. you got Iran then playing footsie, you know, with the United States and agreeing to agreements that really don't mean much. Like, oh, well, the, 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 the centrifuges they're not using, uh, they'll say, well, they'll take those offline. Well, they're already offline. They still got them, but nothing means they got to give it up. And so nothing is being done. Netanyahu is warning and warning. At the same time, that time frame I talked about before the end of November, if they're going to preclude or prevent the Iranians from getting it, the full capability, and although that's been delayed on the plutonium side by the mysterious quote-unquote explosion at the Iraq heavy water reactor, uh, heavy water reactor, uh, project there in Iraq, in Iran there, A-R-A-K, A -R -A -K in the country of Iran. But that still doesn't say anything about the uranium side of the coin or the, about the uh, obtaining of other uh, uses, you know, of other uh, plutonium or uranium from other sources and then shipping it through Venezuela or wherever else. But then Vladimir Putin summoned um, President Netanyahu of Israel, Prime Minister Netanyahu, to visit when? On November the 20th. November the 20th, going to Moscow. Okay? And meanwhile, Kerry is double-teaming in here. Uh, and then Netanyahu's, you know, playing a little bit of the game. And then they announced when Kerry is landing in Jerusalem, he announced he's going to go see Putin. But you see, there is no joy because Ezekiel 38, 39 says that Gog Magog, let me just read, you know, a little bit here because, you know, it's better to read it than to try to paraphrase it like a lot of preachers and people do. And they don't tell you the true stuff. Or maybe I should get the Blue Jeans Bible out or the, 
or the, the gay lesbian Bible or whatever, all these new Bibles, you know, let me go back and read a little of this because it said, chapter 38, Ezekiel, Son of man, set that face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, and prophesy against him, and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, and I will turn thee back, and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth, and all that army, horse and horsemen, all of them clothed, with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords, Persia, that's Iran, Ethiopia, and Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmet, Gomer, and all his bands, that would include Germany, maybe a little bit of France, the house of Torgama of the north, that would be Turkey, and all his bands, and many, and many people with thee. So it doesn't necessarily say that there's not going to be anybody else with them, or that's the only people it says, and many people with thee, and be thou prepared and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them. And you see, he's going to bring those against them. But then, thus saith the Lord, it shall come to pass that at the same time, this is verse 10, shall things come into thy mind, and thou shalt think an evil thought. He's talking about Gog Magog and those people. And thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages, and I will go to them that are at rest and that dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls and having either bars nor gates, to take a spoil and to take a prey and to turn thine hand upon the desolate places that are now inhabited and upon the people that are gathered out of the nations, which have gotten cattle and goods that dwell in the midst of the land. So then you see if you've got Dmitri Dudeman's prophecy about the United States, how in the midst of a civil war started by the communists, we know the communists are now in power in the executive branch in Washington, D.C., and much of the judicial branch and much of the legislative branch. You don't think so? Well, just look at the different policies even the so-called Republicans espouse, and you will find that really all you do is have an argument between Trotskyites and Leninists, Okay. And there's very few true Republicans in the sense of a republic or in the sense of a free enterprise person, not capitalism, but free enterprise. Very few. So they all want socialism to a certain degree, you know. Or they're national socialists, i.e., in a sense, fascists, which is what? Fascism. Remember Old Hawk? We read it out of the dictionary. If you don't know, then look up fascism, capitalism, communism, Nazism, national socialism. Look it all up and get definitions for all of those and teach it to your children so they can understand what's going on. But then, if you've got that civil war in the United States started by the communists, which would be the Joker Tuts crowd, and now we understand that, what Dudeman was basically giving his prophecy about, and then you would say that they would find, he told that they would find the place where nuclear weapons are stored and everything, and that Russia basically would hit the United States. Well, now, to that degree, it doesn't have to be by bombers or even missiles, because Russian Spetsnaz and Russian paratroopers are inside the United States, having been hired by the Department of Human Sacrifice in the Pentagon in a, in a, in a training program, in a program designed to come against the American people in the Civil War, and to fight you, confiscate your weapons, load you and your family onto a trunk, and send you to a National Defense Authorization Act concentration camp at the beck and call, at the sole discretion of the executive branch, meaning 
those that are being told to swear allegiance to now is to swear allegiance to Barack Hussein Obama, Commander-in-Chief. Not to the Commander-in-Chief, not to the President, but Barack Hussein Obama, Commander-in-Chief. In other words, Heil Obama, Heil Hitler. And if you don't go along with that, and you don't like the Russians being here, you don't like the Red Chinese being here and continually coming in to Wright Patterson Air Force Base, and then being dispersed out from there, Russians as well. Oh, and incidentally, there's been a couple of incidents. There was, a, I believe, a day or so ago in Cincinnati at the, I think, University of Cincinnati there. They had a lockdown of that campus. And have you been noticing the cluster? You had an airport, LAX. Then you have a grade school or high school in uh, Denver. Where guys in backpacks. Where have we heard about backpacks before? Boston Marathon, right? Backpacks inside there, and they have a SWAT team to go and get them. But then there's not a lot of joy in that. You got the LX guy who has mentioned the New World Order, and they've tried to lay the blame on that on the Patriot community. But he's an obvious MK Ultra once again. And then you have the Paramus Mall. What is it? Westfield Mall in Paramus. I call it the Paramus Mall in New Jersey. And then you've got a weird story there that changes multiple times and morphs three, four, five times to where there's a guy comes in in a black suit, armored suit, and a black helmet with some sort of firearm, which they never really disclose what it is, who then supposedly... The witnesses say they shot multiple rounds into the air. And then you get the story that the police chief says, well, they only found one shell case. And then the guy disappeared. And that was the headline of the news. And then, oh, he didn't disappear. They found him and he's dead. And there's mystery about who killed him or what killed him or did he do himself or the whole deal. In a con construction portion of the Paramus Mall. But then you see there's never any follow-up with any details. Well, anyway, Cincinnati, Ohio, about two weeks ago at a high school basketball game, there was a weird deal where the cops, you know, sitting around in the basketball arena or whatever there, or gymnasium, they see a guy come in the front door with a gun. You know, of course, they're not at the front door, are they? Nor are they at the front door at LAX either. But you go in any other place, any bank or any grocery store, where are the cops at? They're always at the front door, eyeballing you. Where are they at? Usually in the mall, eyeballing you. Okay? But they weren't at the front door of the mall this time, were they? They weren't at the front door of LAX, and they weren't at the front door of the high school thing. And this guy comes in, he doesn't shoot, but they see him with a gun. And they start to chase him and run after him, and he leaves and exits the building, and nobody ever found him. The cops were much uh, to their chagrin, could not find this person. Well, that person means they got a little skill at evading police, and they know what's going on, and they may even have a radio and assistance. Well, then you see, then they have a similar incident. Now at University of Cincinnati, the Bearcats there, right near the downtown area, and they had to lock that thing down, and then I was talking to somebody locally over there, and they were saying, Hey, this is just like this thing out of high school almost. The guy disappears. He's got supposedly a gun, and he disappears. So this is a cluster of events, and I think you're going to see them build up to another huge crescendo that's going to happen in the United States, maybe in another mall, maybe in another school, maybe another airport, maybe all of the above. And then could you see that happening with nuclear weapons, the ones that are still basically – Nobody knows where those DIS Air Force Base nukes have gone to. Nobody knows where the, still the others that existed at one point in time in the Chicago suburban areas that were held by the Jihadi Joes, where they went to. There's also another extant nuclear device back from the time period when uh, the mighty men and women of valor went after a group that was trying to blow that, that nuclear power plant in uh, back there, uh, you know, a few years back in the desert there in Arizona. 
and how they got, and they, they stopped the, the group from doing it, and they grabbed one device was a large French nuclear weapon, French nuclear weapon, that that got captured, but there was another device that got taken down the road, and they were chasing them, and some of the people went towards the Dallas area, and some went on towards the Atlanta area back then, but I'm not sure that ever those were ever recaptured up. And I think at one point they got some of the nukes in Chicago, which was in uh, Tinley Park or somewhere up there. Steve reported on that years ago. I think 2003, maybe. 2004. But they didn't get all of them. So there's loose nukes everywhere. Stuff comes up the Comanche Trail with the Iranians, uh, with the, all the EIEIO uh, jihadi groups. You know, I, some, a lot of them certainly under the pay of the United States government. Just as I said, jihadis, Libyan, El Shabaab, Somali types, which got a lot of headquarters in Minneapolis. Now, isn't it interesting how now you've got DHS contracting for what is it in Minneapolis, I believe, for all these above top secret clearance highly specialized contractor, you know, machine gun, toting hot dog guards? Oh, ladies and gentlemen, we're in deep doo-doo. And then at the same time, after three billion bullets and all this, then the Department of Human Sacrifice publicly denies preparation for riots or civil unrest even though in their own business solicitations for purchase of everything, they cite, here's one thing, the solicitation that accompanied the hiring of the armed guards actually stated, indeed, to the potential situation listed by the DHS itself as to why they were hiring armed guards to protect government buildings were public demonstrations and civil disturbances. Well, why is that going to be? Are you going to do a bank holiday? Are you going to steal all of the money that's in the 401Ks, all the bank accounts, the IRAs, the stock accounts, the bond accounts, the EIEIO investment accounts? Are you going to steal it all, boys? Or are you going to do that and then also allow the EMP maybe to go hot next week? And that's the 13th, 14th, the Grid X2. When you're going to, quote, unquote, have a drill that simulates. Well, are we going to have a drill like the 9-11 drills? Like the drills that were simulating aircraft crashing into buildings in New York? Oh, yeah, those were the drills. And were there not three and four drills extant that day in New York City alone with emergency per, uh, personnel people already dispatched and, 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 you know, on duty there? <laughs> well, you tell me about a drill, I'm going to tell you, you better, you know, find you a bunker somewhere. You better put your NBC gear on. But, oh, they're denying. Now, is that not also part of a lie that is all lies, or there's the father of all lies, is Lucifer, is the devil. And so then you have a chief executive, a tut, lying 36 times in a row on video tape, and now he says he didn't say any of those things? And that you're mistaken? And then you have Debbie uh, Wasserman Test Schultz, the DNC, saying, Oh, the Joker chatter, and we never told any lies about this. Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act. The father of all lies, ladies and gentlemen. You know who it is. And so we got that to look forward to, you see. We got all these mixes coming against us. And then who is the enemy, according to the United States? It is the disabled American veteran. It is the conservative. It's the Tea Party. It are those people who actually believe in the literal interpretation of the Bible. 
Oh, you believe the Bible's real? Well, then you're a terrorist. Oh, yes. Pro-life, terrorists. Catholics, terrorists. You see, those are the terrorists, according to the United States government. Christians are terrorists. You want to see that? I remember the film. Uh, Alex Jones did the film years ago where he had footage provided by a good firefighter from Junction City, Kansas, who was at a training session being trained by a FEMA trainer, a little, sh never mind, I won't use the expletive, a little goofball, little Napoleon-type FEMA trainer who said that the Founding Fathers were terrorists. Christians are terrorists. And teaching that to the police and the fire? We got all this to look forward to in the United States here. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to civil war in the United States. It's going to be done by the communists running the country. We're going to force you into it. Or you'll get on the trucks. And you'll go to the camps. Work will make you free, right? You see where they're going? Don't go into their Luciferian night without a fight, ladies and gentlemen. And oh, by the way, old McRaven, the old Seal McRaven, wants Iron Man suits for the Seal, for the Special Ops, like to tear down whole buildings. Well, we'll find a way when you set them against us, McRaven. There'll be a way found. Good night to the mighty men and women of valor. If you can alter any of this, the Lord will allow you, please do so. And to the old Fandango Rangers, wherever you may be, I know you're ready. Nicky LaFleur, you're dialed in, baby. Cool as breeze. Good optics, 338 LaFleur. Yellow supply. No problem. Good night, ladies and gentlemen.